you say you are welcome to the I will present to you a candidate for confirmation. I will present to you all the parishioners of the candidate. We are proud to have you as our candidate. You are welcome. And all priests that come with your secretaries, we also welcome you. The bill of the primary for Anthony, you are welcome. Join the program, you are welcome for all.
way. The mighty and merciful God may not earthly undertake to hinder those who set out in haste to meet their son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom bring us that we don't feel from him. We do from him to you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 1 to 5, and 9 to 11. Come forth, come forth, my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that our warfare is ended, that our iniquity Father, that she has refrained from the Lord's hand, double for all her faith. The voice cried, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make way to be that the highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and field be made known. The unable ground shall be called level, and the raw places be plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall say it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Get you up to the high mountain, O Zion, pillar of good tidings, lift up your voices. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, pillar of good tidings. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the city of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord your God comes with might, and his arm goes for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom. And just be like those that are with you.
verse 8 to 14. Do not deplore this one part, the Lord, that to the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow about his glory, as some count slowness, but is forgiving towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but at all to reach repentance. For the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and the world that are upon it will be torn up. Since all these things are not to be dissolved, what are the persons ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the great the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be kindled and dissolved. And the enemy will melt the fire, but according to his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, the Lord says you wait for this, be zealous to be found with me without spot or blemish and of peace.
which were but fulfilling of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And they went out to him all the country of the Jews and all the people of Jerusalem. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with flowers and had a little branch around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. And the priest said, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the child of whose sandals I am not worthy to strip down in the town. I will baptize you with water. And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we were dressing in the 
place there. I asked my dad, which, that was that day before. He said, that was your first church. And you grew bigger, and now you are in this church. I want to assure you that you will grow bigger and bigger. And I am sure someday there will be something even bigger than what you have here. Yeah. After all, the ego man tells us, be bigger, bigger. You will be the very small African dog. Now you are bigger here, yeah. and tomorrow you will be bigger. May God make it so, through Christ our Lord. Yeah. The theme of conversion is what dominates the reading today. The preaching of John the Baptist was an invitation to a change of heart and conduct, a turning from rebellion and disobedience towards God, an invitation to welcome Jesus as the Lord. Repentance. In greed we say metanoia means to change from doing evil to doing good. And repentance requires your personal decision. You must be convinced that you truly want to change. Remember the story of the prodigal son? He made a personal decision when he said, I will go home to my father. He had been messing up his life, but at a certain point he decided, I will go home to my father. Look at what he did. Zacchaeus offered to stop his life of corrupt enrichment and welcomed Jesus into his life. He was a tax collector and a very corrupt man. But when he met Jesus, he said, this is the end of my corrupt way of life. From that point on, he was a new person. He was a new creation. Mary Magdalene made the decision to meet Jesus, and when she did so, her life changed for the better. So what am I saying? That you and I today, that I gather here, if we decide that we will meet Jesus, our life will be transformed and we will be a new creation. So Jesus is waiting and he wants you to come. He is not forcing you. Jesus said, I am here. And we are told he is the way, the truth, and the life. If you come to him, your life will certainly be changed for the better. The Old Testament prophets were concerned about the rebellious and recalcitrant life of the chosen people. In contrast to God's constant love, kindness, and forgiveness. Whether it was Isaiah or Jeremiah or Prophet Amos, the prophetic duty was to speak the undiluted message of God to the people, to the rulers, to the king, to all their contemporaries. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, we read how David, who took the wife of Uriah and, and was reproached by Prophet Nathan, confessed and he was pardoned. That Psalm 51 is the confession of David for having done the wrong thing. The people of Nineveh, notorious for their life of sin, having heard the preaching of Jonah, declared a fast and dressed in sackcloth and were in ashes from the smallest to the king, even their beasts. We were fasting. They were sorry for their sin because of the preaching of Prophet Jonah, and they were spared by God. In Nehemiah chapter 8, the people were in tears of sorrow for their sin. When 
Ezra read the book of the law. When he read the book, they were touched and they started to shed tears because they knew they had offended that God that was so loving and kind and forgiving to them. They shed tears. They confessed their sins. And not only their sins, and the sins of their father, they confessed. As we enter the second year of our journey through Advent, the second gear is to do it. This is the last Sunday of the first gear. You know when you are, if you know how to drive, gear one, the movement is a bit not too much. Gear two, you are a bit moving. Gear three, you are moving faster. Gear four, you are in full speed. That means you can drive from here to Lokota, and if the road is good, there is no problem. So we are in gear two now of Advent. Prophet Isaiah, console and gave hope to the exiled Jews in Babylon, giving them Yahweh's assurance that the 60 years in captivity would soon come to an end and they will return to Jerusalem and to the temple, a kind of a second exodus. That was the hope he was giving them. John the Baptist, resonating the words of Prophet Isaiah in chapter 40, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. Make straight his path. That was what John the Baptist was saying, echoing the words of Prophet Isaiah in chapter 40, verse 3. For preparation and readiness is by making the crooked part of our life fresh, filling up every valley by engaging in good works and leveling up every hill and mountain of pride within us and the destructive habits of sin. We have to do away with all this. That is how we prepare for the coming of Jesus and that is how we are ready for his coming. In response to John's preaching, the people ask, what shall we do? In answer to them, John says, he who has to go, let him share with him who has none. And he who has two, let him do like that. Tax collectors also came to his attack and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than this appointed will. So they also asked him, And we, what shall we do? And he said to them, Rob no one by violence or by false accusation and be content with your voice. So that, that was what John the Baptist told them. Be content with your weight. If these are Nigerian security people, I don't know whether they will be happy with John the Baptist. Because in Nigeria it has become a habit. No matter how well paid you are, it doesn't matter where, whether you are security or academic or you are in politics or in business, no matter how well paid it we are, we always want to get something more. You are paid a salary to do your work, but you want to get something by the side. You are not contented, no matter how. I don't know how we are going to do it. That we must pray for the spirit of contentment. That the little you have, you use it well. So the little you have, you ignore it and put it aside and say, no, I must exploit. I must exploit other people. And you exploit innocent people. You frustrate their effort by hiding that pipe, by making sure they pay you a lot of money for the work that you should be doing. I think we should pray that God will give us the spirit of contentment and then the little we have, we could lose it well. If you are giving work to do, do it well for the glory of God. But everybody today, the work that is assigned to people officially, when they do it, they want to be paid extra. They don't see their salary as what they are paid to do that work. But they must ask 
for extra and they make others victims. That is very, very sad. Anything you do today in this country, if you don't have money to eat, you are in trouble. Right now, the elections are going on in, or have concluded yesterday of the electoral people and all that. I can imagine the kind of money that we were spending Why are we doing this? Why can't you just do your job decently and say, I have done my job and God will bless you for that? Let us pray for all of us. This is going to happen offers Christians the opportunity to engage in self-examination and to seek to answer the question, What shall we do to receive Christ at in our country, we have been stopped in the north on account of our actions and inactions. We are stopped. We shouldn't pretend about it. Other than suffering severe security problems, we still have many internally displaced people. We still have refugees exiled from their homes. And we have many Nigerians suffering the negative economic impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Successive government, that is government after government, have left us with much to be desired. Every government comes and they go and Nigerians are still longing for satisfaction. Something is missing somewhere. Without judging anyone, we call all to repent. That is the message to do. All of us, from the smallest to the biggest, don't be pointing finger at other people. You also are guilty and you must repent. And we call on all others to also repent. Members of the presidency, national and state assembly, the judiciary, governor, local government chairman, soldiers, politicians, Religious leaders like us, traditional leaders, security agents, youth, even you, you are called to repentance. Don't say you are thinking well and that is wonderful. And don't say the victim that we are the ones that are not being looked after. Do something positive with your life and in your life. So we must all you know, answer the call to repentance. We have seen and they have failed our country. They have failed our generation and even future generations. And the only way we can experience God's deliverance for whom has one Peter, our second Peter, three eight says, a day can mean a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The only way we can experience this deliverance is to repent in fear. And that is what we are being called to do today. To the candidate, who today receive the sacrament of confirmation, the Holy Spirit will fortify you and enable you to give greater witness to Christ until He comes. Yes. Did you hear me? Yes. That the Holy Spirit will fortify you. He yes. will enable you and you will be great witnesses of Him until He comes. Yes. I charge you to emulate John the Baptist by being ardent by being faithful and faithful to the of the Word of God. As Christians, our witnessing becomes more effective when our life becomes a message. When we live out what we preach, our life becomes the Bible that others can read and emulate. So, your life should be a Bible. Others can read, can see, can copy your lifestyle, and they will be saved. This is what is expected of all of us, especially you that receive the sacrament of confirmation. In conclusion, please continue to thank God for the release of our priest. Did you hear that our priest was in now? Yes. That uh, Matthew, that Joe of um, Young Goji, Young Goji, Fernando, for by the grace of God and through your prayers, we have been released from activity. So we thank God. We are happy for him and with him. We pray for the unconditional release of many others 
who are still detained in the hands of kidnappers or terrorists. We have not caught the heart of these our kidnappers to release them. Yeah. You know, these kidnappers are human beings like us. They are brothers and sisters. They are all made by God. So we only can appeal to them. So this person is a human being. Don't suffer him. Don't suffer her. Don't punish them. Release them. This is all we can say to our brothers and sisters who are kidnappers. And I therefore conclude by asking the authorities to do more for security. There is need for high-level security in the country, especially in the federal capital territory. This is urgent and this is important. Come, Lord Jesus. That is our prayer. That is our prayer. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus will come to forgive us. Jesus will come to enable us. Jesus will come to take away the sins of the world. Jesus will come to unite us and bind us together in love and peace and unity. So our prayer is, as we wait for Jesus to come, we say, Come, Lord Jesus. May God bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Where is the of you? Are you there? Where are you? Yeah. Okay, all right, you are there. Go. Happy, because when I, wherever I go, and I don't see the of you, because my grandmother is in the church, is not complete. So as I see you now, I know everything is okay. I know that Esther and yourself are working together. So we'll continue to work together. So and I say a boo boo to speak about the eight in Zumunti. To speak about the father who are both now in full and in funny. To speak about the high people in Nasa and Lamu Sam Chikaba. So I'm going to go and I say I'm going to go to the Buddha Mumbuta and Buddha Ayuk and Zumunti. But we are like one case that come on Sunday. The men who come on Masuti Yesu Nakasya. We are like the two of them. We are the two of them. We are the two of them. The two of them. We are the two of them. The two of them. We are the two of them. The two of them. We are the two of them. We are the two of them. We are the two of them.
Okay, there is no confirmation. Are you ready? Yes. Oh. Okay, we will ask you to remain your professional promises. And therefore I ask you, do you reject Satan? I do, I do. Answer if you do. Do you reject Satan? Yes, I do. And all his words? Yes, I do. And all his empty promises? Yes, I do. Now we shall profess our faith. We shall ask you what you believe in. And we believe definitely in the Trinity. So all in the church of our life, and then we profess our faith together. So if that is true, then we put our tongue together. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Yes. Yeah.
Mano. Thank you. 
Bapa. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he has winged at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for and for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection unto you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Ignatius our Bishop, and so his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our most chaste spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, memory to be called as eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Amen. Graciously grant peace in our days, Amen. and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and glory are yours now and forevermore. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, he take away the sins, the sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us this. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only the Savior, the world, and all my soul shall be May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord.
Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory to Jesus. If you are happy, you can put your hands for Jesus. Once again, we join in our hearts and smile in our faces. I would like you to stand up and put your hands together for our Archbishop, who is great. Let's go down the floor. Please and bear some emotions. Hold every Saturday during the morning months. You are invited. opportunity, 150 persons will have been numbers gotten from different parishes. But we are seeing this here today because we have been waiting for this for so long. Your grace, we are hoping that next year we will have you here again. Thank you very much. The parish in St. Jesus we remember vividly during your visit to our binary during the cathedral early this year before the COVID-19 pandemic came upon us. One of your desires which you spoke about during the cathedral was, you know, the project of the cathedral of the 12th of how 
you have the desire for it to be completed as soon as possible. Here in our parish, as lonely as we are here, as small as infant Jesus, we have not forgotten that message. The PPC, in union with the whole parishioners, are working, have set out some modalities in ensuring that we do our own best in ensuring that the cathedral is being completed. And so, we are so honored because we don't really have much to say. Like during your preaching when you say, we have gear one, we have gear two. And I want to let you know that we have not got into our gear three yet. Probably we are in our gear two because we are growing. And to also let us know that in our nature, in this community, we are the oldest oldest parish or oldest station here in the whole airport zone, in the whole airport Nube Dinari. But because of our lonely nature, we are not new and it was not long that we became parish, but we are growing and we are well contented with the way we found ourselves. So your grace, we hope that you're coming here today will continue to strengthen us and our, your messages that we've heard will continue to uplift us and we pray that God will continue to strengthen you too as you come to this diocese and to our parish to see how we are faring both physical and spiritual. May the good Lord bless you and continue to guide you in all your endeavor. Thank you for coming. We thank Brother Moses for this welcome address on behalf of the Parish Pastoral Council. I also want to, apart from his grace, remember as already acknowledged by Moses, he has his graces homily. Today is one year and one day that his grace, most of them, Ignatius Kaidama, took over the pastoral responsibility of the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Abuja. One year, one day, and he has come to give us his blessing. In fact, our blessing is great one. After our cathedral, I say it of you.
Okay, I want to thank you for the Celestine Eze, for the wonderful work being done here in front, in, in front of in front Jesus Parish Edu. There is a lot of work being done. It became a parish only in 2012. And so far, you are going in a great speed. I am sure that very soon, they are full. You will be in year four. May God continue to bless you. Yes, yeah, do not say you are lowly, you are not. Nobody is lowly. Nobody is lowly and nobody is high. We are all lowly before God. And we all start small and humble. So I'm quite impressed. We have this big number for confirmation and to see your dynamism and zeal. May God continue blessing you. The choir. Well done for the wonderful hymns you sang. It's an entire matter for your elegant dance set and very great singing. The CWO. Do you have CMO here also? Are they there? Or they have gone on holiday? <laughs> very good. The Fat Keys, the Ultra Boys and Savas and all of you, the CYO. I hope you have CYO. Very good. So keep up the good work. May God who has started all this good work in you bring it to completion. And we now stand and receive a final blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that you, who now rejoice with devotion 
and our Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Praise be to God. God bless infant Jesus Christ. God bless the Archbishop and the Reverend Fathers. God bless me and my family. Amen. Amen. Amen.